Welcome everyone, and uh, thank you all for being here. I'm here with TJ Wass today, and uh, he's going to be talking about ageless cannabis. Um, T TJ uh, has a lot of experience uh, in the longevity movement, and uh, he's very passionate about cannabis. And you know, we, we've we've uh, discovered that there may be some anti-aging benefits uh, to cannabis, and uh, just just want to welcome TJ and thank you very much for for all your insights uh, during this uh, short presentation. I'll let you take it away, TJ. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the number one thing that I found researching cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and cannabis hemp is that uh, it's been a big legal fight because uh, it was only till 2018 that hemp was legalized. And currently there are about 17 states where uh, cannabis sativa and cannabis indica marijuana is legalized for uh, recreational value in about 28 of the states where it's for medical value, such as Oklahoma, where I'm at right now, and have a medical card. So I've done some personal research into sativa and indica myself. But the biggest part of uh, researching this was the endocannabinoid system. And there are three parts of it. Endocannabinoids, which are chemicals that are found in the cannabis plant. The uh, uh, cannabinoid receptors within the body that uh, uptake uh, the cannabinoids. And then finally, the uh, hydrolytic enzymes that break them down to be used by the body. And the endocannabinoid system is separate from the cannabis plant because according to evol evolutionary research, it's been in a, a primordial uh, uh, animals such as newts and sea squirts and amphibians for 600 million years, there's been an endocannabinoid system that they have utilized because our bodies naturally produce cannabinoids from what we eat each day to call into account homeostasis to make us balanced and to fight back against antitoxins and uh, any extremes in the environment that harm the body, it gets homeostasis is what we're looking for. And the cannabis plant comparing 600 million years of evolution, the cannabis plant has only been around for 38 million of those years. So it's been much more recent in evolutionary history that we've been able to take advantage of it. And the number one uh, cannabinoid that has been researched is CBD. And uh, there are seven anti-aging benefits of CBD. First, it prevents memory loss. In 2011, there was a study on mice that showed that it reversed aging in the brains of mice. And there are researchers that believe it will prevent Alzheimer's and dementia based on those promising research studies. And this was before it was legal to do so. So uh, they did it there in uh, California. I believe it was Berkeley was the university that the study was from. Number two, it reduces stress because it works within the endocannabinoid system and regulates the production of cortisol, which is stress hormones that cause you to gain weight and become sluggish and lazy. So it reduces stress that way. And uh, it changes your person's mood, positive behavior, and keeps stress levels low. So CBD is very beneficial for that, no matter your age, young or old. And I'd like to say that uh, endocannabinoids are even produced in mother's milk for uh, newborn babies to drink, and it's safe for them. And uh, we'll get to this later, but British doctors studied ancient Indian doctors in the British Empire. And in India, for pain reliever for babies, instead of using morphine, they would use cannabis indica extract because it was so safe, the babies could not overdose on it. So that's something to look forward to uh, for uh, future medicine that we're working on now. And next, it prevents acne outbreaks. It helps uh, with uh, skin elasticity and uh, avoiding deterioration of the skin. So uh, it's the natural oil called sebum, and uh, it keeps the skin moisturized, and CBD helps to regulate the optimum ability of our glands to produce that and prevent acne outbreaks and also to keep our skin looking younger. Uh, number six, it fights free radicals. Uh, CBD is an antioxidant that helps with uh, keeping uh, free radicals from uh, interfering with us and that includes uh, pollution from fumes, dust and ultraviolet rays 
chemicals, gases, and more things that can wreak havoc on your skin over time. And finally, it induces sleep. So this is one of the great things about hemp CD, CBD is that a lot of people use it to get night, a great night's sleep and uh, it's good for beauty rest and can uh, have your skin's healthy condition and overall look uh, become better over time. So it'll make you appear younger than you are actually uh, in reality. So that's uh, about the uh, CBD benefits for anti-aging. Are there any questions so far? Okay. Moving on, we're going to talk about uh, cannabis sativa versus cannabis indica. And this chart right here uh, says the differences between them. And sativa is taller and slimmer as a plant, and the leaves are longer and thinner. There's much hotter environments like uh, Africa and um, the Mediterranean is where these uh, sativa plants grew naturally. Now, indica are shorter and bushier, and the leaves are shorter and wider. And uh, it shows you that those are uh, being uh, developed in Afghanistan is where indica is mainly produced. And uh, sativa has more THC versus CBD, while indica has more CBD versus less uh, uh Less uh, THC and sativa gives you a head high alertness. It's uplifting you for it. It makes you creative and increased energy. So this is very popular for daytime use. The sativa, while indica is a body high, it makes you relaxed and an appetite uh, stimulator and sleep aid and pain relief. So what I like to say the difference between sativa and indica is that sativa, you can take the SAT college exam and do well, while indica, you're in the couch. You're stuck in sleepy mode uh, and you're uh, very uh, lazy during the day. So not all marijuana, not all cannabis makes you lazy. Sativa actually makes you energetic and that's the biggest part that you look at it. And uh, hemp is rope, not dope. So it doesn't do anything on the uh, mental or body side other than giving you a good night's sleep and less stress. So there's no psychoactive properties from hemp. And that's why many other countries for the legality, they can research CBD from hemp because uh, that does not have any THC. And looking at the history of medicine, uh, it has been used for thousands of years in China and the Middle East and uh, Hebrew tribes would use it, such as Moses and Aaron in the Bible. And um, this is uh, Queen Victoria, who lived to be 83 years old, and she reigned for 63 years in the British Empire. And her doctor, Sir John Russell Reynolds, uh, wrote that when pure and administered carefully, cannabis is one of the most valuable medicines we possess. And he prescribed a cannabis indica extract for her menstrual cramps, and it cured Queen Victoria's PMS. And this is actually a recipe for making a, a cannabis tincture, also known as green dragon or chronic tonic. And you take a, a minimum of, of one eighth of an ounce of cannabis, grind it up and heat your oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And you bake the cannabis for 30 minutes to decarboxylate or decarb the THC to absorbable THCA. And then you take the plant material to put it in a glass mason jar and add two ounces of Everclear or high proof alcohol to every eighth ounce of cannabis. And you uh, wait an hour, shake it up multiple times and the liquid is good to use, it's green colored. And you take a tablespoon of it, of the liquid and avoid the plant material. You don't wanna drink or eat the plant material, just the liquid and uh, mix it in a Gatorade or a soda or any other drink and uh, you'll feel the strong effects within an hour and the uh, effects uh, are maximized for three hours of use. And I got the recipe from Popular Science Magazine, magazine did an article. And this is a study that they did. This chart here is the decarboxylation chart where you get the most THC for your buck, most bang for your buck here. And they uh, would heat it to 145 degrees and you could do it for seven minutes. And uh, this is uh, Celsius 
uh, versus Fahrenheit. So 293 degrees, you have a really short window of uh, opportunity to get the most THC possible. While over here, 80 degrees Celsius versus 176 degrees Fahrenheit, you're uh, leveling out at a very low amount of THC. So that's why I like this one right here, where it's 122 degrees Celsius or 252 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. It gives you a lot of leeway for making a mistake. So you could be on there for 25 minutes at 250 degrees Fahrenheit, or you could go for 40 minutes and you're still not losing out and getting the maximum THC for your tincture for chronic tonic or green dragon for the tincture uh, for your usage for medical or recreational value. And uh, as far as the endocannabinoid system is being researched, there are currently 114 of those that are being researched right now. And there are about 300 chemicals such as terpines that are being uh, used in there as well. So it's a very complex plant and cannabis has many more benefits than you can believe because they're being uh, discovered every day now that we have hemp legalized and also states where THC is legalized as well. So I hope that you enjoyed my presentation. That's what I have so far. Are there any questions? Thanks, EJ. Yeah, that was uh, very, very insightful there. Andres, Camilla, any questions for TJ here? No, I, I really enjoyed the presentation. I think you did a really good job, TJ. So. I really enjoyed, uh, yeah, like also that uh, you started with the anti-aging, uh, possible anti-aging benefits of cannabis. It's really re relevant for anyone watching this to, to discover how it might benefit them in different degrees. And I also like the different examples in, in terms of, I actually found this, this ancient recipe of, of, uh, of cannabis that was used to relieve some, some, some different symptoms. That's quite extraordinary just, uh, to, to just go back in time and really figure out something that really worked there. And it also just, the ancient times always just gives us clues to what might work today that just might not, have, uh, might not, uh, might not be discovered through studies as of yet, but, but it just, these ancient things, uh, ancient uh, herbs and spices and all, all these things, they, they just give us clues to what might work for us in the present. So I really enjoyed these different examples that you gave. And, and yeah, I thought it was a great, great presentation, TJ. Thank you. I really appreciate your kind words. Thanks Thank you. TJ. I really, I really enjoyed your presentation. It was really interesting and extensive. And I really enjoyed the actionable insights you brought uh, that anyone can listen and really like implement in their real life. Like, so Thank you so much. And I learned a lot today. Actually, I didn't know anything about that <laughs> before. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Camilla. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. You know, it's it's one of those things that um, cannabis is, is understudied. And I feel like we're still at the beginning of, of making discoveries on what a lot of these uh, cannabinoids can be used for and how the endocannabinoid system interacts with, with each other part of the body, including the nervous system. Uh, it's something that I feel like, you know, they're starting to make more discoveries every year now. Um, and there's thousands of studies showing benefits for, for cancer, shrinking tumors, uh, Alzheimer's, uh, for, for alleviating uh, or stopping seizures, uh, really just a wide variety of ailments that we've seen the application of cannabis uh, really surprised our society because obviously everyone knows that in the past it was illegal and it was uh, classified um, as something very dangerous. But now, you know, now, now that with this new research, it, it's definitely apparent um, to me and I think it's apparent to everyone here that there is, some, there is some benefits under the hood when you take a closer look. And from an aging perspective, I feel like you can isolate certain cannabinoids like CBG, for example, uh, which we're now seeing has some anti-aging and anti-inflammation uh, benefits. Um, so I, I only wonder what we're gonna see years from now when 
we discover uh, many more cannabinoids within the plant uh, and we're able to isolate each one. And in combination where we may be combining say three or four cannabinoids into a single therapy uh, to target a, a specific ailment. Um, I think it's, it's fascinating. I think that it's likely the most therapeutic plant on the planet to some degree uh, has the most use cases that and, uh, a lot of them being undiscovered still, but um, yeah, thanks a lot, TJ. R really appreciate your thoughts and uh, yeah, great, great job here. Appreciate you putting this together. Thank you. One last thing I'd like to remind you is if anybody says the federal government says, well, there's no medical value for cannabis. Well, just look at kids that have seizures, hundreds of those a day finally stopped by using cannabis sativa or indica extract. It's uh, really a, a, a waste of uh, a lot of potential goodwill that we could have for curing people from multiple ailments, but look at the kids. If it's safe enough for them, it's safe enough for, for everyone. 100% agree. That's a very good point. <laughs> for sure. And it's also just interesting, like how, how these, these different different drugs, they, they, they've kind of been misunderstood to some degree because like we've kind of discovered in the last few decades that if you actually use them in the right in the right way, you actually microdose them or use them at specific times and at specific intervals and at specific dosages, they might actually have some great benefits. And, and, and there is probably a reason why we, we, we use them um, for, for so many centuries just uh, back in time. Like even something like, like uh, LSD has, has been shown to, to also be really, really beneficial for different, different ailments um, in terms of mental health and in terms of um, other, there are other different diseases, also even some brain health benefits and different things. So, so it's really interesting to just see what we, what we discover through these uh, next few decades in terms of, of if, we, if we're, we're actually wrong in terms of banning all these substances, which we, in, in different cases, might. Um, so yeah, that's really going to be interesting to see what it all leads to. For sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things you got to have, you got to have a balance you know, anything, um, even, even water could be, could be, uh, dangerous, you know, if you, if you take too much of anything. Um, so it's all about finding that balance and, and figuring out what is the therapeutic benefits for, for a society. And a, a lot of these things, I mean, you got to follow the money. It's like, you know, there may be a financial incentive for some of these, uh, large organizations and governments to make certain things illegal because, uh, they, they may want to make, make more money, even, including uh, pharmaceutical companies. I mean, if you can cure an ailment uh, with, with cannabis that, you know, if, they're try if someone's trying to sell a different therapeutic, there may be a financial uh, component as, as well. And so I think it's a lot of good points. And I think that, you know, one of the, one of the main breakthroughs too for, for this area is the fact that you don't necessarily have to smoke cannabis anymore. You can uh, get it in a different form, uh, like like TJ was alluding to. You know, an, an edible, uh, a tincture. You know, an oil. Um, you can even get CB, CBD in like a lotion. Um, different creams that they sell at uh, farmers market and maybe even Whole Foods. Um, so it's really changed the perception, and I feel like that perception of cannabis is going to continue to change, even though you still have a large portion of the population um, thinking that it's 100% negative and that it has no place uh, in our society when in reality um, there's much, much more dangerous uh, drugs that are being prescribed that those people are, are for. So it's definitely a bit, um, they may be a bit misled. So anyway, I'm going to end it here. Thanks, thanks guys. I'm going to end. Um, thanks for listening to our uh, talk here. <laughs>